This video is about the word degenerate, and words like it that are used to impose morality on you. You know what morality is, right? It's just rules about what's right and wrong. Where does it come from? Well, we could work out what we think is right and wrong for ourselves based on our knowledge, experiences, and so on, but most of us simply inherit our morality from our parents, teachers, media, and everyone talking about the law. Even if we use all the critical thinking in the world and develop nuanced ways of seeing the world, that same world will attempt to impose its rigid morality on you. I think the modern spread of the word degenerate is an example and warning of how morality can be used to spread bigotry and restrict everyone's freedom. I'm Chris, and welcome back to the channel that auto-played after you'd watched all the videos with proper editing. This video is brought to you by ShitStation. If you want your shit delivered, and you don't care about the quality of the service you receive, call ShitStation, and we'll do a crappy job of it. The word degenerate is used in sciences, but it has specific meanings that have nothing to do with the way lay people use it, which is what I'm talking about. It gets used in casual circles to insult people or culture, and it's mostly used by fascists and people being manipulated by fascists. It has nothing to do with biology. There's no science or research behind the idea. It's a word for Jews and other racialized people, disabled and mentally ill people, and everyone else fascists have it in for. The Nazis used it to describe art they wanted to remove from German museums for being un-German. Who's to say what's un-German, really? The whole idea is fatuous. Besides, a lot of it was made by literal Germans, but it didn't represent the Germany the Nazis were imposing on Germans. From the Holocaust Memorial Museum, the Nazis claimed the ambiguity of modern art contained Jewish and communist influences that could endanger public security and order. In case you're new to the study of propaganda, public security and order refer to the uninterrupted order imposed by the state. Also notice the usual fascist claim, the whole society is under attack from these dangerous influences. No specific harm, just a vague influence that might somehow affect the culture in a negative way. They claimed that modern art conspired to weaken German society with cultural Bolshevism, or today cultural Marxism, another term fascists are still using. According to Nazi ideology, only criminal minds could be capable of creating such harmful art. The Nazis called this art degenerate. They used the term to suggest that the artist's mental, physical, and moral capacities must be in decay. At the time, degenerate was widely used to describe criminality, immorality, and physical and mental disabilities. But the Nazis took it a step further, not just censoring, but regularly stirring up disgust for anything they said was polluted by contact with the bad groups of people. At a book burning in Berlin, Goebbels made a speech saying, No to decadence and moral corruption, yes to decency and morality in family and state. Like degenerate, these words mean nothing. They're pure rhetoric that serves to link the arbitrary idea of degeneracy or decadence or corruption to the arbitrary idea of morality, and use them both to create a new system of morals everyone would have to adhere to. In the most effective nationalist propaganda, it's not just those people aren't as good as us. They're fundamentally at odds with us. The moralizers choose their words to imply the object of their contempt is such a poisonous force, it'll bring down our whole glorious society. What they mean is the culture still allows freedoms they would like to take away. A lot of propaganda is just nice sounding words with vague meanings listeners can project their own feelings onto. A crowd cheers when it hears the word freedom, and then again when it hears about harsher punishments for minor crimes. They let the ruling class tell them how bad the ruling class is, and why that means they have to punish marginalized people. 
So when we hear degenerates, what are we supposed to think? It might mean the culture is changing in ways that makes the, the speaker lose a little of their power. And they've identified groups they've decided are to blame and therefore need to be driven out of public life. I think people's values tend toward the compassionate, like to gay and trans people, until a propaganda campaign, like one linking them to CSA, wrenches it back to status quo bigotry. After the propaganda lays the groundwork, the no to decadence types use force, perhaps by criminalizing a victimless pursuit like taking hormone replacement therapy. As a fundamentally fascist idea, degeneracy essentializes whole groups of people, saying they are all and must forever be this way which is inferior to us and weaker than us, but also they pose an existential threat to us. It considers any identifiable group outside one's own to be burdens, parasites, traitors to be eliminated for the good of the rest, who are the real people of the nation. It rests on unscientific beliefs about evolution, which spawned a whole racist and eugenicist movement that culminated in the Nazi death camp. After 1945, eugenicists saw the logical end of their pseudoscience in practice, and it lost most of its appeal. But it's coming back, and it's spreading on every social media platform. To the neo-Nazis really entrenched in the beliefs and conspiracy nonsense, degeneracy is a real thing that applies to anyone in any group they can bully with relative impunity. Like all people who want authority, they're moralizers. Neo-Nazis are a small movement, but they have an influence that outstrips their size, partly because everyone assumes they're too smart and good to be influenced by them. Nazis are all about power and violence. Not all moralizing people do is for power, but a lot of it is. People might seem sincere, but then they might just be convincing. All you need to be a successful politician or other form of con artist is acting skill. They might seem like they want to spread their morality just because they believe in it so firmly. But you would only need power if you wanted to force your morality on everyone. But whether or not they try to make laws over you, I find a lot of people want to use the disgust or guilt associated with words like degenerate to tell you what to do, to influence your decisions and limit your behavior. A lot of morality is about limiting other people's behavior. If I'm your parent and I tell you it's wrong to question your parents, I've established a rule, which, like all rules, I can now enforce with punishment. And it's a moral rule, so you have the additional punishment of guilt, which could last your whole life. Moral sanction has a lot of influence on us. If they want to keep their mouths clean, people will avoid words like degenerate and say woke instead. Alternatively, they'll describe themselves as normal, as in the latest talking point adopted by the right-wing hive mind, I'm not cis, I'm normal. It's their way of saying people in the group they're contrasting themselves with are degenerates. Degenerates are physically and morally inferior, not normal like us, so not capable of reaching our level of goodness and purity, at least not until they conform to every last one of my demands. When you've changed to suit me, come back and I'll have more demands. Bigotry fosters a sense of superiority in the bigot as they come up with new reasons it's a moral imperative we discriminate against these people. But until morality is invented and legislated and enforced, minding your own business is the norm. You were free until a few people decided the free aspects of your life would be subjected to official moral scrutiny and prohibition. Sexuality has been moralized. I don't know if I'm using the word moralize right, tell me if there's a better word, but that's how I'm using it. Sexuality is moralized. We are still haunted by the ghosts of religious values left over from 2,000 years ago. We're supposed to feel guilty for having sex for any reasons other than having children. 
with anyone other than your one partner of the correct gender. These narrow beliefs have been enshrined in law all over the world, wherever homosexuality or polygamy are restricted, often because of colonialism and often not. You are clean and pure if you're a virgin, but you're dirty, filthy, to some people irreparably ruined if you've had sex. And of course that applies way, way more to women than to men. In some parts of the US, dads and teenage daughters have a purity ball, where they celebrate that the girls are considered the possessions of their fathers until their fathers approve of the men the girls want to marry. In other parts of the world, they tell you masturbation makes you lose your sight, or makes you impotent, or that you only have so much uh, essence in you, so if you jerk it, you won't be able to have kids. Uh, older people who were tricked from a young age to feel bad about their own sexuality pass down their insecurities in the form of sacred commandments, and the cycle continues. The nuclear family unit has been the dominant way to have kids since it was imposed on people to implement capitalist policies more efficiently. I can recommend books on this if you want, or you could just Google social reproduction or reproductive labor. But the problem with official approval for one form of the family is it gets moralized, so you're encouraged from every angle, including the law, to find one person, again, of the correct acceptable gender to settle down with, have kids, and struggle together as a family against the world. What? You want to live with a bunch of people and raise your kids together? You don't want kids? You're gay? Degenerate! Gender has been moralized? I didn't realize it until I learned about trans and non-binary people and I saw how hard people push on them to not exist so that they can maintain their simplistic worldviews of the two genders, outy and inny. But apparently it's so important for kids to look like a stereotype based on their genitals, they aren't allowed to wear different clothes or change their hair without some moralist telling them they have to change it back. Nowadays, a lot of those moralists are making laws, so I couldn't, say, wear a dress in public without getting arrested. Now, I'm cishet, so I probably wouldn't get the urge, but it would be nice to have the option. It's probably way more comfortable to wear a dress than jeans on a hot day. I wouldn't be able to change my gender on my birth certificate, which should raise questions about why officials feel the need to know and gatekeep your gender. Legislating morality means politicians, bureaucrats, and police get the final say in how you're allowed to look and act. People who think gender and sexuality have to be rigid and binary have learned to think in ways that would make them suitable bureaucrats. To a bureaucrat, things have to fit into their categories, because they're official categories, enforced by law, and that's where they get their authority from. The reality of the people on the ground is irrelevant, and the bureaucrat's not interested anyway. They draw lines and write definitions so that the state's program is easy to enforce. You could read the book Seeing Like a State by James C. Scott if you want to know more. So you people are all in this group, whether or not you say you are, because that's how the state has decided to define and treat you. The right wing follows this pattern. There can only be two genders, and they can only be defined by recognizable traits like genitals. Because if not, things are too complicated and messy, and I want a simple, predictable world that fits into my box. All must conform, so I don't have to think. But freedom is messy. It shouldn't be limited by legal definitions, but allowed to be the mess that it is. True, not everyone will conform to your values, but it's possible your values weren't universal and obvious after all. People claim to be following science, or common sense, whatever that means, or tradition, or other vague ideals, so their opinions can sound like more than just opinions. After all, if it's science, then your conclusions must be true. 
That's why they put the word biological wherever they want to be transphobic. Like in biological male. Sounds sciencey. It isn't. It's fashy. Drugs are moralized. Drugs are bad. You shouldn't do drugs. Uh, if you do them, you're bad. Supposedly drugs are bad because they break up families and ruin people's lives, but people will judge you for doing the drugs that don't usually ruin lives, like cannabis and hallucinogens. And alcohol's fine because it's legal, so it's only bad on a case-by-case -case basis. And not bad for all society somehow, like cannabis and hallucinogens. And opium. Opium is also illegal, and yet it's key to the painkillers we rely on. But to confused moralists, it's good to spend hundreds of dollars on pills, but bad to grow the painkillers in your garden. I guess that's what happens when you're told all your life the law is the correct measure of right and wrong. If people can make you think it's right, they can convince you to do it. They can also convince everyone else it's right, and they in turn pressure you to do it. The more things they moralize about, the more rules we're supposed to conform to. So the more people refuse to conform, so the more groups we don't like. So they'll call you a degenerate or a deviant or a misfit or a radical. They're all just words for nonconformists. Every generation has people who think things are getting worse, and the latest generation just isn't as respectful, smart, you know, whatever, as my generation was. Aside from the obvious point you can make that they're seeing through rose-tinted glasses, they're right that morality has changed, and the rules and standards they were taught to believe in have dwindled. Moral standards, and maybe all beliefs and values, are always degenerating, i.e. breaking down. And the idea of traditional values is so vague, it means whatever you project onto it. So anything other than your ideal is a break from them. But everything changes. Just because morals obsolesce doesn't mean new ones aren't always taking their place. They might not use the word sir as much as you used to, but to say today's generation is just plain disrespectful? I see no evidence for that. It's quite possible they respect more people than you and your traditional values do. But the real problem is the people who don't want morality to change because they have a big stake in the status quo and use the means of violence to maintain their interests, like laws, police, and prisons, and propaganda to get everyone else to enforce it when they're not around, because you didn't think you came up with the idea we were in moral decline entirely on your own, did you? Key to maintaining one's power is to claim a monopoly on morality and divide people into good and bad. That's why our goal shouldn't be control of presidencies, courts, and legislatures, but exposing to the people around what this system is and how it indoctrinates us, and encouraging them to rise up against all imposed morality. What's that? People have believed in a non-existent moral decline for 70 years already? Sorry, 2,000 years? Turns out that moral decline was more of a manufactured moral panic, just like the next one will be. I guess it's up to us degenerates to encourage a true decline in morality. It's not that all moral rules should be thrown out. It's that we should find our own morality without letting it be dictated to us by social institutions like parents, schools, and the government. The most valid morality to me is the one you arrived at by yourself, independently, in as much as that's possible, of the dominant beliefs around you. You might find you agree with some of them, but if you don't question them first, how do you know? For example, in order to break the blanket taboo on all stealing, I made a whole series arguing there are valid reasons to steal, and valid people or institutions to steal from. There are plenty more crimes that either create no identifiable victim, like doing drugs with your friends, or only victimize the most powerful people and then only indirectly, like stealing from Walmart, which 
therefore could be described as beneficial for the community. You don't arrive at that conclusion by assuming the law has a monopoly on morality. And hey, if the dominant values are based on compassion rather than authority, I might adopt them. As I said, I find people tend to value compassion until authority gives them reasons not to. I used to sympathize with that group until the newspapers told me about the bad things they do. So now I don't care how they're treated. See the problem there? Alternatively, the propaganda can appeal to our sense of sympathy and explain we have to hurt these people for their own good. Don't worry, they're fine. They're just confined temporarily in a place where they can get help. They're degenerates, you see, or to give the diagnosis its new name, Fuhrer Derangement Syndrome. Either way, compassion should mean wanting everyone's freedom, however degenerate they are. There's nothing wrong with being considered a degenerate. It's practically a compliment if fascists look down on you. Maybe we should even call ourselves Gen D. Has anyone suggested that before? We're ugly, mutants, losers, rejects, and scum. So what? Maybe we just don't accept your standards being thrust on us. Sorry. You never listened to us anyway. You never respected us. And you want us gone. But we're not going. Wherever there are people trying to claim authority over others, they will meet resistance. And we will resist till we destroy all authority.